This is an artificially aware original production. What if I told you that your entire sense of self is a glorified hallucination? A mental trick pulled off by a bunch of brain cells working overtime. Now I know I've been talking about this ego illusion in previous videos, and many of you are already on the path of questioning that tiny voice in your head that keeps telling you who you are. But here's the kicker. I've just come across Chris Niebauer's No Self, No Problem, and it's like modern science has finally walked in and said, yeah, Buddha was right all along. That same illusion of the self you've been trying to let go of. It's not just spiritual fluff anymore. It's backed by hard neuroscience. And now, we've got a solid understanding of how your left brain is basically a compulsive storyteller, making stuff up as it goes, while your right brain just chills in the background connected to the universe. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Strap in, because this ride is about to blow your mind in ways you never thought possible. Let's start with Descartes, the 17th century philosopher who messed with everyone's head by saying, I think, therefore I am. Ever since, the West has been rolling with this idea that you exist because you think. It's a fun soundbite, right? makes you feel important, like there's this permanent I that's doing all the thinking and controlling your actions. But here's where the real trip starts. What if Descartes was completely wrong? What if that I is just a smoke screen? For millennia, Buddhism's been saying exactly that. There is no stable self, just this flowing river of thoughts and experiences. And guess what? Neuroscience is now stepping in to confirm that there's no control room in your head where some little version of you is sitting at the controls, managing everything. You've got a brain, sure, but the self? It's not part of the equipment. Let's bring in the science. Modern neuroscience has mapped out nearly everything about your brain. There's a spot for language, another for memory, one for empathy, even one for recognizing faces. But here's the catch. They haven't found a single area for the self. Niebauer dives deep into this, explaining how your sense of I is nothing but an illusion concocted by your left brain, the side responsible for language patterns and narratives. That's right. Your brain is like one of those freaky magicians pulling off sleight of hand so convincingly that you don't even realize you're being tricked. The self. It's just a narrative your brain invents to make sense of your experiences. The left brain, the real culprit here, is constantly generating stories, desperately trying to create a cohesive identity out of all the chaos. But when you start poking at it, the whole thing unravels like a cheap sweater. No self, no problem, right? Now, let's talk about those split brain experiments from the 1960s. Total game changer. So scientists were doing this experimental surgery, cutting the corpus callosum, that's the bridge between the left and right brain, to help epilepsy patients. Afterward, something bizarre happened. These patients started behaving like two separate people. Each side of the brain began operating independently, and here's where it gets wild. The left brain, which is where language happens, would see something. And when the right brain, which controls the left side of the body, did something without explanation, the left brain would just make up a story to explain it. One famous case involved a patient who saw a chicken foot with the right eye and snow with the left. When asked why they chose a shovel, left hand, right brain, 
the left brain immediately said to clean the chicken coop. That's your left brain for you. If it doesn't understand something, it just makes something up. And this, my friends, is where your sense of self comes from. A constant stream of made-up stories that you just take as gospel. The left brain is obsessed with language. It's where all your internal monologues happen. You know, that little voice that won't shut up, always giving commentary on your life. It's like a non-stop radio show in your head. And here's the kicker. Language is nothing but a tool. Sure, it helps you navigate the world, but it also tricks you into believing that categories and labels are real. Take a chair, for example. You sit on it, you know what it is, and your left brain says, yep, that's a chair. But try asking yourself, what really is a chair? You'll quickly realize there's no inherent chairness in the universe. We just agreed on a word for it, and now we think the word is the thing. Same goes for you. Your name, your job, your hobbies, these are just labels, categories your brain uses to make life easier. But the second you start believing those labels are who you really are, you've fallen into the trap of the left brain. It's playing its usual tricks, convincing you that you're a fixed thing with a solid identity, when in reality, you're just, well, nothing. The human brain is a pattern recognition machine. It's constantly scanning the environment, trying to find order in the chaos. And that's a good thing most of the time. It helps you navigate life. But the problem is, it's also why we cling to the illusion of the self. The left brain is always trying to piece together a story, find some coherence, even if there's none to be found. Take the Rorschach inkblot test. You look at a bunch of random blobs and see patterns, faces, animals, whatever. Your brain needs to find meaning, even when there's none. The same thing happens with your sense of self. Your brain takes all these random experiences, thoughts, and feelings and forces them into a pattern. Suddenly, you've got this neat little package called you. But like that inkblot, the pattern isn't real. It's just a projection of your mind. And once you realize that, the game changes. You can stop clinging to that pattern and start living with more freedom. You're probably wondering, what's the harm in believing in the self, even if it's an illusion? Here's where it gets personal and painful. When you believe in the self, you also believe in everything that comes with it. Insecurity, anxiety, fear of rejection. Chris Niebauer shares a story about a friend who was convinced her co-workers were talking about her behind her back. She saw them whispering and immediately constructed a narrative that she was being excluded. Her brain took a few random events and built a pattern. They don't like me. And what was the reality? They were planning a surprise party for her. That's what your brain does. It fabricates patterns that make you suffer. But once you realize the self is an illusion, you can let go of those destructive patterns. You're not the story your brain is telling you, and you don't have to believe every thought that pops into your head. Now let's talk about the right brain. The chill side. In 1996, Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, a neuroanatomist, had a stroke that shut down her left brain. Suddenly, all that internal chatter, all the labeling, all the stories, gone. And what did she experience? Pure peace. She felt like she was one with everything around her, not separate, not isolated by an ego. She wasn't Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor anymore. She was just presence. And this is what you can tap into when you practice mindfulness or meditation. When you silence that left brain, the ego fades away and you experience what it's like to just be, 
No judgments, no labels, no stories. You become part of the flow of life, not an isolated entity trying to control it. So how do you access this right brain awareness? It's simple, through yoga, meditation, or any practice that takes you out of your head and into your body. When you're practicing yoga, you're not thinking about who you are or what you're supposed to be doing. You're just moving, breathing, existing in the present moment. Same with meditation. You focus on your breath and suddenly that left brain narrative gets quieter and quieter. You're not trying to interpret your experience. You're just experiencing it. And that's where the magic happens. You start to realize that all the stories your left brain is telling you about yourself aren't real. They're just thoughts. And thoughts aren't who you are. Here's another fun fact. Your right brain is also where your intuition lives. You know that gut feeling you get sometimes? That's your right brain picking up on things your left brain can't explain. There was this crazy study where participants played a card game designed to trick them. The left brain couldn't figure out the game for 50 to 80 draws, but the right brain picked up on the patterns after only 10. And even though participants couldn't explain why they felt nervous about certain cards, their palms started sweating, proof that their right brain knew something was off long before their conscious mind caught up. Intuition is real, and it's powerful, but it doesn't come from the part of your brain that talks and makes plans. It comes from the part that's silent and observant. Right brain thinking doesn't just give you peace and intuition, it also makes you more compassionate. Compassion isn't just some feel-good spiritual idea. It's literally hardwired into your right brain. There's a part of your brain, the right temporal parietal junction, RTPJ, that's activated when you empathize with someone else, when you put yourself in their shoes. And the more you practice compassion, the stronger that part of your brain becomes. Same goes for gratitude. Studies show that people who regularly practice gratitude have more gray matter in their right brain. So if you want to strengthen your right brain and loosen the grip of the ego, start by being grateful. Actively seek out things to be thankful for, even when life gets tough. Trust me, your brain will thank you later. Now I'm not saying we should completely kill off the left brain. We need both sides to function in the world. The trick is balance. Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor had to regain her left brain's abilities to live her life, but she never forgot the peace she experienced with the right brain. She learned how to switch between both sides, depending on the situation. That's the middle way knowing when to let go of the ego and when to use your rational mind. It's, it's not about rejecting the self entirely. It's about not letting the left brain's chatter dominate your life. You don't need to be trapped in the story of you all the time. You can step out of it whenever you want. Here's the challenge. Start questioning the stories your left brain is telling you. When you catch yourself thinking, I'm not good enough, or people don't like me, stop and ask, is this true? Or is this just another pattern my brain has made up? You don't have to believe everything you think. Once you realize that, you start breaking free from the ego's grip. And that's when life gets really interesting. You start living with more freedom, less fear, and a deeper sense of connection to the world around you. The self isn't something to defend or build up, it's just a story your brain is telling you. And you're the one holding the pen.
So here's your call to action. Have a complaint-free day. No complaining, no whining, no internal grumbling. Just for one day, focus on what's going right, not what's going wrong. It's a small step, but it's one that can help you break free from the left brain's tendency to focus on negativity. And who knows? Maybe by the end of the day, you'll feel a little more connected, a little less stressed, and a lot more grateful. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone who needs a little ego death in their life.